Well, that's, I realize that's not very cultural. Um, you know, it's not a very cultural thing to, to do that sometimes, but I just, you know, that's just always been my mode. Yeah. Okay. For those of you who are joining us live, we're going to get started in just a minute. I'm just trying to get some things set up and ready to go. And checking. Checking my sound. Yeah, got it. All right, we have sound. We are live. Um, today I'm trying something a little different. I'm sticking my camera here so that I actually have a. a I'm, I'm facing them so that the world can world can see me. And then I'm going to turn that off because I don't want the world to see me the whole time. But um, so we will. We will start momentarily. I'll give give everybody a couple minutes and turn off my. Yes, I'm aware that Steve is not coming. Yeah. No, I, this, this comes up every day whether I'm using Paratex or not. Every night it runs this game. Right, okay. Do I want that? Um, I, I would say probably we're going to want to take that off, but you can just close it for right now. Um, okay, good morning. We are, we are live. I have sound. We are, we are there. I'm going to step here so we can see. Okay. Welcome. Let's, um, let's begin with prayer this morning. Steve White is not feeling well. He's sick, and so he stayed home. And Neil went to the Concord Airport to pick up um, the last person who's arriving for the workshop, who will be, be here this afternoon. And so Neil's not here either. So um, Paul is going to be my TA this morning. And <laughs> um, I just told him that. He just found that out now. Um, so you can thank him. Thank him for his willingness to, to assist. 
Um, but let's pray together. Father God, thank you for this, this third day of the workshop, and um, thank you for the way you um, care for us and guide us. We do pray for Steve, that you'd minister healing to him today, give him some rest so that he can um, be fully recovered, be with Neil as he's up on his way to the airport, um, bringing Chetty back, and uh, we pray that you'd get them here safely. We pray for um, Josh Carter this morning, pray that you would minister um, to him and to his family in this uh, time. Thank you that you are a God who loves us and cares for us, and um, as we consider these issues of getting your word into the hands of the people of the world, Lord, give us wisdom and help us to grasp the things that we need to, to grasp. We thank you for your love and care. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so let me um, switch here. I'm going to switch just to the screen capture. So, what day is today? Wednesday. Thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. We're not going to sing the song this morning, but um, we may sing it later. We may sing it another day. All right, well, we'll do the wave. It's too early for the wave yet. You know, I mean, we, 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 haven't even, we haven't even, you can't even be falling asleep yet. I mean, the wave is for when you're falling asleep. That's what we do. All right, today we're going to be talking about project management. But before we get started in that, as uh, my, as uh, my, no, I changed, the batteries are in, but let's see here. Make sure they're in the right direction. Always helps to put the batteries in the right way. Well, when technology fails you, you go back to the old technology. Okay, let's see. There we go. You just have to be clicked on the right window. Okay, so for those of you who are following the technology of what I'm doing, you have to be in the right window when you're clicking things, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, before we start on project management, just a couple of things. And that was supposed to all come up individually. So three things that come up all at once. Um, technology is a beautiful thing. The first thing is, again, I want to remind you all, and those of you who are out in the, the greater world listening, that there are videos available on a site called Vimeo.com at the Paratext channel. And if you go to that, um, what you would see is, um, in this case, it actually opened up a particular video that I really don't necessarily want to open that video. Why did it do that? Um, OK, so what, what you will see is a, a series of videos. And, and a couple of them you'll see at the end here are how to register for Paratext, project migration, and then there's some here about modifying a project plan. So these have been already prepared as videos for you, so you, you guys could just leave now if you want. Go home and watch those. Um, these are relatively short, so the, the video on project migration probably takes 10 minutes. Um, so hopefully that's a review. What we're doing here is being streamed live. It's also being recorded, so you could go back and, and review what we've done here. But I, just, I want you to be aware that there are resources um, available, and in particular, this resource at Vimeo.com um, that deals with um, the paratext. And there's the link. Um, now, I have to say that if you're looking at the PDF files that I've given you and I've put on the memory stick, that link is not there because I just put that link in this morning. So it didn't make it onto the, you know, I have no way, I have no way of magically saying, boom, put, the, put these updates on your memory sticks. So, you know, you might want to make a note of that link if you want it. Okay, what can go wrong with registration? We, we were talking about this at the end yesterday. We say, well, the first thing we said was nothing. The second thing I said was two people try to register at the same time. And um, so, and the third thing that we want to talk about is how to register offline. I'm actually going to just show you really quickly, I'm just going to show you how the registration offline would look if you weren't connected. So 
Yesterday, when I was in Paratext, I had actually Sorry for those of you who are out in the real world. I did not have that screen showing. Let me, um, I'm going to back up just one second. Technology is a beautiful thing. So, because um, I was not screen sharing this with the world out there. So let me just, for those of you who are out in the, the world, we were talking about this link. They can't see me pointing to it. I'm pointing to the link. The Vimeo.com channels Paratext is a, a great resource for finding some videos that deal with Paratext. So for those of you who are out in the stream watching, that was what I was showing before I um, didn't turn on my presenter view of, of that. So in Paratext, come on. In Paratext, yesterday we had disabled at one point our internet access. So right now I have no internet access. Again, for some of these things you have to be intentional. So we remember when we re registered a guest user the other day, when we registered a guest user, I had to be intentional and say I'm going to disable internet access. I, it's not just because internet isn't available, I had to disable it. Um, so I have disabled internet access and so now I want to go and I want to go through the process of a migration. Okay, so I'm just going to really quickly show you this, that I go to open project and resource and again kind of by default now it looks like the show Paratech 7 projects may be disabled, it's not turned on. Much of what I have are resources, you can see down the right, the type column here that all of these, these a whole bunch of these are resources so I've got a pretty full list but they're all resources I've downloaded. I want to migrate a Paratech 7 project. When I click on show Paratech 7 I get a message that says Paratex normally contacts the registry in order to safely migrate. And right now, at this moment, internet is disabled. Okay. I think if I had internet turned off, if, if I just didn't have internet, I would get the same message, I think. But I'm not sure on that. Do you need to migrate a shared project while you're offline? So if I say, um, yes, I want to migrate a shared project offline, it's going to warn me that internet access is disabled up here, but it is now going to show me my Paratech 7 projects that I can migrate. So for instance, if I come down to this project, the ZZPTP that's um, unregistered, I can do this. Now registration is recommended, but because I'm offline, I can't do it. Okay, I, I, I can't do it anyway. So I can just simply hit the migration. Um, if it were a shared project, I would still have to say I have the rights to do this, but I would migrate it. Again, the process from there is pretty much the same. The key is, is that as soon as you have internet access, you want to go back and register it, okay, and make sure it's registered. The other key to this is, again, how many people should migrate a project? So you really have to do what? Communicate. Wow, you guys are good. Communicate, yes. You have to communicate. So if I'm going to do this migration, I need to communicate to the rest of the team that I'm doing this migration. Hey, I'm going to be out in the village and I'm going to do the, the migration. Don't just, just assume that, okay, well, you know, because I'm the top cheese, you know, everyone's going to wait because somebody else might think, well, okay, hey, he's the top cheese, but he doesn't have internet, so I'm going to go ahead and migrate it, okay? And if you have internet and you're migrating it, then the registration's going to know that you've done this, and if this guy over here has not got internet and he's migrating it, the system's not going to know he does it, but then it's going to potentially get potentially complicated. So communicate. Make sure that you know what you're doing. Now, the other thing that I ran into um, with a problem in migration, and I'm going to turn back on my internet access, which when you turn on internet access, you have to restart Paratext so that Paratext knows you're connected. So I'm going to turn on Paratext. And when, when I'm in Paratext, 
I want to migrate a particular project, so I'm going to go to Open Project. That's how I migrate. And here's this MPT project. It says that it's 7 and it's unregistered. So I'm going to click on it, click OK. And so, OK, it's, it's a shared project, so I need to register it online. So I click Register Online, and I have a problem because it's already registered. But it's not registered by me. And so there's this disconnect has happened. What happened here is that another person on the team, who happened to be the administrator of the project, he registered it, but then he didn't migrate it. So it's kind of sitting up there registered by him. So now I'm trying to do something, and I can't. And again, that goes back to our issue. How many people can register and migrate a project? One. One. This also points that right here, the person who registers it probably needs to migrate it so that it works. Now, I, I, I'm not, I can't say with full 100% assurance that that's always the case. If it's registered, it may be able to migrate. But in this case, it was registered by somebody else in order for me to actually migrate, I need to go as that person, finish the migration. If I log in, as, if I set my Paratext registration to the other person, I can do the migration, bring it in, and then I'm happy. So again, you want to make sure that you communicate and that you have one person who's doing this process. Okay? Don't mix up the process where one person goes out does part of it, somebody else goes out and does part of it, yeah. okay, do it. Now, there's pre-registrations that were out there, that, that shouldn't be an issue, okay, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, you mentioned something that when you were looking at a project or something, you said, I can see that uh, that's a shared project. How do you know it's a shared project? Okay, so when I'm, when I'm in, let me see, let me get back to this, let me get back to this, okay, when I'm, when I'm in, Paratext, I'll migrate this later. When I go to File, Open Projects, when you're looking at this list, in many of the cases, you'll see something in parentheses after the name. So right here, it says that it's seven unregistered. Now, you're asking about the shared. How do I know it's shared? OK, so if I open that, That list didn't tell me. So if I open it, then I see up here that it's shared. Now, if I only, at the very top, it says migrate shared project. If I only want to see shared projects, shared projects are found under send receive. So if I go to send receive, and again I show seven, then why is it not showing, oh, why is it not showing me what's on the internet? because I'm on the USB. So you got to make sure you, this, we'll talk about send receive later, but this is very important. You have to know where you're sending and receiving, because if you keep hitting send receive, and you keep sending it to the memory stick, the people on the internet are never going to see it, and they're going to say, I'm not, I'm not seeing his changes. Well, where are you sending? And I've, I've personally done this many times, where I've, I've been trying to send a project to myself, and I keep sending it to the USB, and it's like, where are the changes? There's a, there's a bug here. The changes aren't coming through. And it's like, oh, well, never mind. I'm sending it to the wrong place. OK, so these projects, if they show up in this list, if they show up in this list, this is send and receive. By def default, send and receive are shared projects. So if you want to find projects that are shared, then send and receive is the better place to try to look. Okay. If you go to open, then you're going to see everything, whether it's shared or unshared. Now, hopefully, hopefully, you're not dealing with 800 projects, only 125 like you are, but hopefully you're going to know which projects are being shared. You know? So, I mean, I know that I'm sharing a project with somebody. So when I'm going to, when that, when I'm going to migrate the project for them, I know I'm sharing it. That, that's just, you know. I have some other projects on my computer that I don't know whether they're shared or not. But. Um, I, I, we've got it here. I mean, it's in send receive. So if you want to open the shared, that's yeah. 
you could certainly put the request in, but um, yes, ma'am. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that should never be a problem. I, um, I this 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 process well, the the process because of the tie to the registry because of the fact that we're tying everything now to registry. And so in registry you've got users, you've got projects, and so everything starts to get into this tangled web. Okay. Um, it is different from what we used to do, where we didn't register projects, you know, so it was never an issue. You're not going to have to remember who registered this project once it's migrated. Once it's migrated, it's migrated. Okay, it's on. It's in eight. You're set. Okay. The problem occurred here, and I wanted to demonstrate this: that I had a situation where one person had registered this. And, and it may not just be simply that they registered it, but it may be that they registered it, had it on the computer, deleted it, or did something, you know, they may have been playing, deleted it. So if you're, if you're playing with, let me say this clearly, if you're playing with a project and just testing it out, then you might want to consider deleting it from your computer and deleting the registration so that when you're ready to migrate, you do the whole process at one time, rather than leaving it in a condition where you've played with it, set it up, played with it, done work, and then left the registration sitting there. Because I think that's really actually what happened here, is that this other guy, did the he tested the migration, he played with it, took the migration off, but left the registration hanging, you know, for a project that he'd set up, okay? So, but again, I think that the principle is, is the same. One person ought to do this process for the team. Okay, and so if you're going to kind of halfway do it, you know, then you might want to wait. Okay, don't halfway, don't register it and then say stop. You know, do the process all the way through. Okay. Any questions on that? That was just kind of a tie up of some of the things we talked about yesterday with registration. So project management. When we were in Paratext 7.5, how many of you used the project management tools, project progress and, and such? Okay, a couple people used those. How many didn't know they existed? <laughs> okay, you know, a lot of people don't realize that in Paratext 7.5 there were some tools. So I want to go and um, I'm going to open up Paratext 7.5. If you've got 7.5 on your computer, you can open it. 7.6 was a little bit different, so you probably don't need to open it. But if you want to, if you want to open up 7.5, you can. I'm going to open up 7.5. Mine tells me another copy of 7. Paratext 7 is running because I have Paratext 7.6 open. So I'm going to close Paratext 7.6 and open up Paratext 7.5. And in Paratext 7.5, the project tools, the project tools were found in a special place. I'm going to go open up the project that we were looking at yesterday. We op looked at this test, ZZ Test 99. We're going to be using ZZ Test 99. So, Mary, if you didn't get ZZ Test 99 installed yesterday, we'll deal with that. But. Um, we're going to look at ZZ Test 99, and um, I'm going to go to the book of Galatians. And I'm actually going to change my window to stacked three columns so that I can just kind of sit it in there. In Paratext 7.5, there were some features. There was a feature called... Where did it go? Project tasks and checks. There it is. Required tasks and checks, actually. 
It's required tasks and checks down at the very bottom of the screen under project menu. And when I open that, what what I can see is that it gives me a stage and, and things. These are stages that I actually put in. I, I modified this because Paratech 7.5 allowed me to create a, a stage and even allowed me to put some checks in. But this is what the assignments and progress looked like basically in 7.5. I'm going to close that. If I go to project, project progress settings, this is what my, my project plan looked like in Paratech 7.5. And I have stages on the left, which I could click on and, and rename at one point. There were tasks that could be added into the process. And so I could I could work on a a plan. So this is what this is what 7.5 had and gave me. Let's flip over to Paratext 8. And again, I'm going to open up ZZ99 test, ZZ test 99. I'm going to set my windows to stack three column. And we, we talked the other day when we did the what's new in Paratext about the question of how can I know that I have a plan attached to a project. It's a quiz over the, 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 this is two days ago, I realized that was a long time ago. How can I know there's a plan attached to this particular project? There's a little icon, okay? So the little icon in the top corner tells me that there's a plan attached to this particular project. So if I click that button, what I see is my tasks and my assignments and my um, progress here. Okay. There's been a huge jump from 7.5 to 8 in terms of how we present this project progress and project plan to be able to to um, work with, to assign tasks to people, to indicate that the progress has been completed. And so this, again, is probably, to me, the most significant change in Paratext 8 that we really want to, to capture in how we, how we use it. So why all the fuss? Why does it really matter? Why use a project plan? This is not rhetorical. Do, how many of you, if you were on a project, how many of you plan what you're going to do? Yeah. How do you do it? Paper. Okay. A list. Okay. So how do you know what's been completed? Okay. And then what do you do? And you trust that he's not saving face and saying he did it because he did but because he doesn't want to say no. Okay. And why do you do why do you plan? Okay, because you want to get something done. I mean in some ways, it's, you kind of think, well, okay, Phil, that's a stupid question. I mean, of course we want to plan. I mean, we want to, know, we want to know where we're going and why we're doing this, okay? And so, and, and paper, does it work? It can work if, if, if your house doesn't burn down. 
If your house doesn't burn down, the paper works. A word, a, a, an Excel spreadsheet will work. You know, there's lots of lots of tools that you could use for project management. Okay, but why use a plan? Well, because it helps us keep track of the tasks that need to be done. What you know, what tasks need to be done. I've seen some translators have a plan that has 120 steps because you know they want to you know turn left out the door then turn right and go down the street then you know some people when you're going to go someplace you say okay go to Waxhaw that's all I need go to Waxhaw and I can get there some people need to say turn left on Davis turn left on Providence South turn left on Waxhaw Monroe you know turn right you know turn right turn left so which which levels important works for you well, it depends on you know what works for you but so keeping track of those we use a plan so we can keep track of the assignments who's who's going to do what okay. the thing about the paratext 8 project plan is it actually can automate some of the processes for us particularly the running of checks the project plan will not automate a task and say okay good do this task it won't it doesn't send an electric shock through the keyboard to the translator's fingers to say oh no you're supposed to be doing something you know it, it that would that would be a feature request i guess yeah. you know send a shock through the keyboard that will alert the translator that they need to do something okay but the project plan also allows us to have consistency now for for someone who's say working with seed company in theory you're going to use the same plan with all your teams so that when you when you're looking at team A you can say okay well team A is at this point team B is at this point so you want to have a consistent plan whether it's on paper or whether it's on the computer you want a consistent plan so that you can keep track of where you're going and you can say all these teams are at this point okay if you have one plan that gives a set of tasks to one team and a different plan that gives a different set of tasks to another team it's hard to tell where they're at okay. and having a plan also allows you to do better reporting because if you have a plan and you've been talking to your translation coordinator about this plan that you're doing then you can say well here's where we are in this plan yes last week we were here now we're here and that makes sense to them so by having a good plan we can do that are there some other reasons that you'd want to plan Okay, so as we talk about planning, then having something that actually shows people what they need to be doing and helps them to, to get all the pieces is important. And I, you know, we're kind of we're we're mixing things because we're 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 talking about the Paratext A project plan. We're also just talking about planning in general. And so, on paper, it's a little bit more difficult to do what you're saying because on paper, I mean, even if you give this paper to everybody. You know, I guess you could post it on, you know, you could post it on the, the whiteboard and say, okay, here are the tasks for today, but it, it's a little bit more complicated than if it's actually built into the tool that we're working with. Okay, so let's talk about plans. In Paratext 8, we, and, and let, me, let me pull up Paratext 8 so we're looking at it. This is the assignments in progress. Um, so I'm going to close that window. Let me pull up the real Paratext 8. Okay, so in Paratext 8, when we talk about projects, we're, we're talking about, and, and project plans, 
we're looking at a, a field here under project plan and so when you talk about the plan and if I go to manage plans there are there are several plans that come with Paratext 8. Okay. This is probably a leap from where I just went. I, you know, somehow I, I leaped into this, this management plan piece. But um, there are three plans that come with Paratext 8 by default. One is called the SIL base plan. One is called the UBS trial plan. And the other is called the TSC plan, revision 9. Those three plans. And you'll see in my list, I've got a couple of others, because every time you create a plan, then Paratext adds that to your list of possible plans. So if you use a plan on one project, then that plan becomes available for use in other projects. So I don't know if you're with me, if you're following me there, but if you're on your computer looking, if again, if you were to go to if you were to go to um, click on project, project plan, manage plans, and then where it says show base plan, you click the list, you would see that there are several possible base plans that were created. And so the question is, well, why three? The reality is that there are a lot of different people who use Paratext. And my guess is that if we were to talk to the SIL translators in this room and said, what plan do you use, we would find widely differing plans as to how people work. If we were to talk to the seed company people, we might find a little bit tighter thing, UBS might be all over the world, you know. So one of the things that happened, they're all over the world. Yeah. One of the things that happened is that as we talked about planning, the realization was, one, we don't have a single plan that Paratext could say, this is how you should translate. It's not possible. We, the decision was made that each organization should try to provide their, their people with a plan that they felt like was, was reasonable. Seed Company and SIL got together and said, well, we, we're sort of in the same family here. We need to make sure that at least we're in the same ballpark in terms of stages of planning that we use, that we talk about drafting, we talk about revising, we talk about you know, these stages. And so so plans were created based on, in large part, Katie Barnwell's plan for, for translation that was done multiple years ago. The UBS people kind of looked and said, you know what, we don't really want a real detailed plan. We're going to create kind of a minimal, this, this, you need to do these things. This is the minimal thing you need to do. And then people can add to it. So the question is always, okay, well, do, you, do you create a detailed plan and then take things out? Or do you create a very simple plan and put things in? How many of you are adders? How many of you are subtractors? How many of you have no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, because, okay, well, and, and I'm, you know, as I, as I try to think of a, of a, of a, a, an appropriate scenario, you know, the, 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 the thing is, 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 is it easier to build something complicated and then take out the pieces you don't need? Or, or start, start with a complicated thing and take out what you don't need? Or is it easier to try to start and build up complication? It just depends. It just depends. So, um, so, so basically, we created these plans. These plans were put in place as a, a starting point for us to work from. Now, when I'm on this plan, I want you to, and I'm going to kind of notice here, we're talking, I opened up the ZZ test project. 
that I had imported from Paratex 7.5, migrated. Notice that there is a plan there. On the right-hand side, there's a plan. And it actually matches up with what was in 7.5, but there's no base plan. Okay, so this project had a plan in 7.5, and that migrated with the project. So when I migrated the project, the plan that I was using in 7.5 came over. So for those of you who, who have worked on detailed plans, have no great fear. That project, that plan will come over. Now, this plan looks very different from, say, the SIL plan. So we'll talk, as we go through the day, we'll talk about how we can, can modify it to, to make them similar. But the question was sort of, why are there three different plans? And the reality is, is that there could be probably a thousand different plans. Um, if you talk to every SIL translator and said, please create your, what you consider to be the, the appropriate plan, you would get some very different things. Some basics might be very common, but you'd get very different specifics. Like I say, if, we're going, if I say go to Waxhaw, some of you might say, well, just, just drive, drive into Waxhaw. Somebody else would say, turn left on Davis, turn left on South, Providence South, turn left on, you know. And so the, the, the level of detail would be different, okay? As Ann said, it's helpful to have some level of detail to give people direction. How much detail is necessary depends on your team, depends on where you are. Where you are. If you're just beginning or if you're very experienced. So, so for people who are visiting this area who've never been here, if I said just go into Waxhaw, that might be very frustrating. But for people who live here, that's all you need. On the other hand, for people who are visiting here, I need to give very much more detailed level of task. Were you going to ask a question, Caroline? Or? OK. I thought I saw the hand creep a little bit. But. OK. So, so we've added these multiple levels. And, and, and so that the goal is to try to help. Now, why not just create a plan from scratch? Because ultimately, project plans are a very complex thing because there are a number of, of interactions that can happen. Interactions between when one task starts. So in other words, if my plan says go to Waxhaw, that's not very complicated. But if my plan says turn left on Davis, turn left on South Providence, turn left on Waxhaw, old Waxhaw Monroe, that's much more detailed. Now, what if somebody tries to turn left on Old Wax Monroe Road first thing? It's not going to work. You, you can't do that. You, know, you have to do this in a linear fashion. So to get from here to Waxhaw, we have to follow a linear path. Okay? But if I say, if, if the tasks for today are go to Waxhaw and eat lunch, so my my Directions are turn left on Davis, turn left on you know, South Providence, turn left on Old Wax Monroe, et cetera. And then down a little bit later is eat lunch. Is eat lunch dependent on the go to Waxhaw? No. Not necessarily. I mean, because I could eat lunch in Waxhaw or I could eat lunch here. So I, that's, there's no dependency. Go to Waxhaw I could go to Waxhaw and come home. There's no, there's no dependency in this task on the other task. So planning gets really complicated really quickly because certain things are dependent. Okay? In other words, I can't turn left on Old Providence or Old Wax on Monroe until I turn do the other things. I have to do it dependently. But there are other things that I'm going to do that are not dependent on that. Okay. But it gets more complicated. If you don't have any food, you've got to go to Waxhaw to get different food. I can go to Lancaster. Then yeah. You can't eat That's right. And or if you said eat lunch there. Eat lunch there, then that's a different thing. As as we think about planning, as we think about progress, tro project planning in a, in a project, the same thing is true. 
So if my plan says draft text, and then it says keyboard it, and, and so drafting is something that maybe I'm doing on paper or something, then obviously I can't keyboard it before I have drafted. I mean, I've got to do those linearly. Okay. But if my task says, for instance, check word list and check parallel passages, those aren't necessarily things that you have to do the word list before you can do parallel passages. Those aren't necessarily linearly dependent. Okay? So where they fit in my plan and how you define it becomes a little more complicated. And again, we're going to look at that in terms of setting up the plan. The other thing that, that can be complicated or, or can make things different is that certain things require me to do something. So for instance, if I'm, again, taking to Waxhaw, if I say drive to Waxhaw, that requires me to take my car. Okay? So I've got to do something with my car or, or bike or something. I've actually walked. But you have to do something to get there. Okay? Whereas eating my lunch doesn't require my car. Okay? In the same way with the project planning, there's some tasks like keyboard the, the text that requires me to actually edit the text. And there are other tasks, like exegesis, that doesn't require me to e edit the text. Or review with the, the, the pastors. Reviewing with the pastors doesn't require me to edit the text. I mean, I might put in changes after we've reviewed it, but that review process is something that we're going to be doing probably orally. So some tasks require me to edit things in paratext, other things are just things that I'm going to do. Okay? So all of that is going to filter into this project plan that we're going to create so that we can work on it. Now, let me, let's, let's, I'm going to come back and I'm going to, um, let's open up the M, you can do this. On your computer, open up Paratext 8, and open up the MW project. Open up the MW EBFT project, which hopefully you have. If, if we restored it yesterday, and I think we registered it, so it should be should be there. If you didn't, if you don't have it, you may need to restore it. The MW. Okay, and I would suggest closing down your other windows just so you don't have too much confusion. Okay, and so when we have this open, um, again, at this moment, I have a plan. You should have a plan maybe or not, but let's go to project project plan, and in my case, the project plan says TSC plan revision 9. Does, do you have a plan in yours? If you don't have a plan in yours, click manage plan, and you can click on show base plan, and there's a drop down, and you can choose the TSC plan 9. So we're going to choose that. You would copy the plan and click OK to make it your plan. And it should show up like this in the, the left-hand pane. Now, one question that is going to come up for a lot of people, OK, click that, now click OK. That's going to come up for a lot of people is to say, do I have to use that particular plan? Manage plan. I'm just going to select the TSC. Copy it. And click OK. And so now you have that plan there. 
That's where we're at. Okay, so, so you have this plan. The, the question is, do I have to use a particular plan for this? Someone who's a TSC consultant. Do we have a TSC consultant in the room? Would you want your teams to use a particular plan? Yeah, Probably. They need to have a plan. They need to have a plan. In general, we're going to, to want to use, but who makes that decision? It's going to be typically at the high level of the organization you're with. So if you're with the seed company, the seed company is going to make that decision. Then at the next level down, it's going to be the the regional coordinator or the consultants and then the team. So you're going to be working your way down. The team obviously is going to have input into this, but typically the team um, the, the teams are should be looking to the organization to say, okay, what what plan should we utilize? Okay. Again, the reason for that is so that there's some consistency in the teams. Because if one seed company team is using the seed company plan, and another one's using some other plan that they've created that's totally different, then you have no way of, of seeing where these teams are. So we, do, you, do you have any kind of, of list or something that shows what are the basic differences of the two plans? In a bird's eye view, not all the details. I have not seen that put together. It probably would be able to put something in a chart that shows. But if you wanted to see what's different in these three plans, the simplest way to see what's different in the plans would be to go to the manage plan and click on and choose another plan. When you click that, under manage plan, if you click it, then you can see what's in the USB, UBS plan. And you can see the US, UBS plan doesn't have a whole lot of information here. The TSC plan has more. And the SIL based plan has even more. The SIL plan has more details. The SIL plan has the most details of any of the three plans. Okay? Again, which is the better plan? I, I, you know, I'm SIL, so I have to say the SIL plan is the best. But. <laughs> We'll get to it. Okay. Because because the at this case the current plan has exegesis. Oh, okay. okay. So what happens what happens is that if I already have a plan, if I already have a plan and I switch the base plan, then these are things that I could change or add in. We'll, we'll again we'll deal with that a little bit later, but. So in answer to the question of which, what, what are the plans like, if you click on a plan, then you can see it down the left-hand side of what's there. When there's a gray item, like in this case, the UBS plan, drafting is gray, that's because drafting already exists in our plan, that, that phrase. Okay? So there may be other phrases that are similar, but if, it, if it, they're at all different, then they're not going to show up, even though draft, you know, even though they're similar, it's, it's, it's not going to show up. Okay, so, um, so do you have to use a certain plan? Well, it depends. It depends on your organization. It depends on your um, team. It depends on your coordinators and your consultants. I would like to encourage you to give serious thought to this working on a plan, creating a plan that you're going to, to utilize and encourage your team or teams to utilize, particularly those who are consultants. Um, I would suggest that for a consultant, it would be ideal to try to be able to use the same plan with all the teams you're working with so that you can then keep track of where the teams you're working with are. Now, having made that comment, not every project is the same. Some projects are a whole New Testament or a whole Bible. And so they're, the things you do in a whole Bible are going to be very different, maybe, from the things that you might do if you're doing a scripture portions. So you could have a plan for a scripture portion project, or, or say you're working on a project in Luke, 
Okay, well, you're still going to want to do a lot of the same tasks, but there may be some tasks you say, well, we're not going to do that thing. We'll get to how to modify this plan as we, as we go. But you, you want to consider what, is the, what are the tasks, what are the plan that you want to follow. So at the moment, um, we're following the, the TSC plan. If I choose a plan, then you'll notice up in the top where it says project plan, it's got that name. And if I don't change anything in the plan, if I don't modify anything, then it's going to keep that name because this, is, this hasn't changed from what that original plan was. But as soon as I start modifying it, then it'll put a custom name on it. Okay, what modifications can be done to a plan? Well, basically, you can take out tasks, you can put in tasks, you can take out stages, you can put in stages, you can add checks, you can take out checks. Pretty much, you can modify when it has to be done, you can modify um, if it's dependent on something else. There's a lot of things that you can modify in the task, and again, we've got all day we don't, you don't have to stay all day for all this, but we're going to take, we're going to take time. We're going to take time to actually modify a plan. We're going to take time to actually um, see what happens with that. Can you see this plan in other languages? Okay. This is a good question. The answer is it depends. It depends. Um, and we didn't talk much before about language, but, but let me just take a minor digression. I'm going to close this window and keep the changes that I've made. Minor digression. In order to change the language of a plan, you have to change the language of the interface in which you're working. Okay? So, for instance, if I said, I'm going to change my interface to Chinese, don't try this at home if you don't read Chinese. Okay, so I'm going to change my interface to Chinese. Now, you'll notice that, that my interface is in Chinese. Now, I have to thank the, the people who did the localization in Chinese because they at least put the English letters of the um, menu items there so that I could still find where tools are and things and project, so thank you guys, that was great. But the interface is now all Chinese. If I go to my project plan, and since I can read Chinese, I know where it is, I can go and select the plan. Now, at this point, the seed company plan has not been changed, but if I were to change the plan to the SIL plan, then you'll notice that the SIL plan has been changed to Chinese. Okay. It has also been changed to Spanish, okay, and not French. The French haven't gotten to the localization yet. I don't know if you guys are hearing that. Um, so, but in order to see it in another language, it has to have been translated into that language, okay, and added to the plan before you add it, before you start working with it. So it doesn't automatically change, it has to be something that you have, that the, the language is here when you start. There are some ways to get the plan changed, but this also only applies really to the major plans. So at this point, um, I think the Chinese has been done for this and for the UBS, um, okay, obviously the UBS plan um, isn't here right now. I thought it was, but um, that's interesting. I thought it was done there. Okay, so so the plans are going to can be in other languages if they've been translated and and prepared. Um, Spanish has been done for the SIL. It's not been finished for the seed company plan. The problem with uh, changing the interface is then you have to know how to go back and find the right um, menu, which, again, simply because I can read Chinese, I know that that's where that's at. And so I can get it back to English. Um, 
it's easier with Chinese because they put the, the links. Russian's really hard for me. It's like, okay, I, I don't know what this does. Okay, so when we, when we have plans, the plan could be in a language if it's been translated. But let's say that I, I haven't, that it hasn't been translated, but I'm still working in, in another language. When you are in the plan, there's a place here for basic items. So I'm on drafting, and it says drafting English. If I click on Dutch German, for instance, then it would give me a place where I could actually translate the name for drafting into German so that I could translate this for my team. So if I wanted to do this for my team, the plan that I'm using, I could translate it into the, the particular language so that they have it. Okay. So it is possible even for your, your plan that you're working with to translate that. Well, the, yeah, what, what shows up, what shows up is the, the language of the interface. What shows up is the language of the interface. So if I've chosen Spanish, for instance, as my interface, and something wasn't translated there, well, let's say I chose English as my interface. If I choose English as my interface, and... I come in to English, I could say that instead of drafting, I want this to be translated in the receptor language, which is write the stuff down. Okay, So I write it in my receptor language, and so now when I'm in my plan, when my, on my assignments, then that stage is now called write the stuff down. Okay. So that's again for my plan. For that one. For that plan. So if I was if my team was working in Spanish in the Spanish interface, then I could change what the word was in Spanish to what it is in their receptor language to make it more usable. So yes, I can edit that. And again this applies to this doesn't apply to all of these plans that go out there, this applies to the plan that I've, I'm working on. So let's go back and call it drafting like it was. Okay. Okay. So in order to, to go through this thing, again, one of the first things we want to do is, is attach a plan. And you've actually attached the plan already. Um, you so all of you have a plan on the MW project, right? We all have the seed company on the MW project. I have a question. Yeah. Um, if you want to change uh, the current plan to another plan, you probably thought, or you'll probably do this, it's hard to find a way to copy it and overwrite your current plan. Yes. Okay, so... The question, it, it, it is very difficult to overwrite a plan. So let's, let's, let's talk about that because you guys all attached a plan. Okay, so how I realized that I attached the, the, the seed company plan and, and I'm really SIL and so I should have done the SIL plan. I just, I messed up. What do I do? Well, let's go back to project, project plan. And... You manage your plan, hint, hint, under manage plan. Okay, so I'm going to click on manage plans. This is not totally intuitive, so I'll do it, and then you can do it. But basically, to if I look at this plan and say, okay, oh, the current plan, this is, this is here, I want to get rid of it, what I have to do is I have to delete these tasks and stages. The simplest way to do that is to start at the bottom 
stage. You don't have to delete each task. But if I delete the stage, it's going to warn me. Paratext allows you to modify this plan, but check with your organization okay, to make sure you do this. Well, we're, we're not modifying it. We're getting rid of it. Okay? I'm getting rid of the plan. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm just going to go through and get rid of each stage going up. Sometimes it tells me that it's moving the, the tasks. And so until I get to the point where my current plan has nothing. So all I did was click on each stage and delete each stage so that they're gone. I don't have to delete each task individually. I can just delete each stage. Okay. So go ahead and delete each stage. Just click through. Delete the stages until there's nothing there. No. No. So there's, there's currently no you know, collapse it things. There's some things there that would be nice, but again, this is not something, hear, hear me carefully, this is not something that you're going to do daily of go in and change your plan around. You don't want to change this plan once you set it up because if people start marking progress and you go and delete all of your plan, then you run the risk that, that their progress gets the, rights to change the, plan? the administrator, okay. the consultant, I think. And actually, you can assign somebody the rights to deal with the plan. But, but so, you get, rid of get rid of everything, all the way so it says none on the right hand side. So we have no plan. We have no plan. Okay? That's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing to have no plan. plan to That's right. It's easy to hit the mark if you have no mark, right? You'll hit it every time. Okay, so, so we have no plan. Everybody, is everybody here? No? Well, what I want to do is I want to reattach, reattach the plan. I think it depends on what happens to be in the stage. Or I'm not exactly sure why it asks. Sometimes I've, I haven't figured that out. Why sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But so so the goal is to to get back now. Right at the moment, there is no base plan there, or there's base plan showing. But change it to the SIL base plan so that what's what's selected in the left hand side is the SIL base plan. We're going to set this for the moment as our plan to work from. So we're going to choose the SIL base plan. And to attach a plan to attach a plan to a project is, is pretty straightforward. We simply choose copy plan at the top, and that copies it into what's called the current plan. So that becomes our current plan. The reason I had to delete the old plan was is that I can't copy a plan over top of another. So if there's a plan there, I can't copy another plan into it. You'll notice that the copy plan is now gray. And even if I chose the TSC, copy plan is now gray. Once I have something on the right-hand side, I cannot copy a whole plan over. So I can't say, okay, let's take the, let's take the seed company and the SIL. We're going to have them both. We're going to do all of it. And we'll do the UBS plan too. You know, you, 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 can't, you, you, you can't do that by copying it over at the top level. Okay. So we get our current plan. And that now, that now will become, when we click OK, that will become the plan that we're using as a base, as a starting point. Okay? So we're setting up what we're starting with. We we'll click OK. And that takes us back to the, the, the main project plan editing window that allows us to work with this plan. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about what we see here. 
at the top, again, is the, the name of the current plan, Pro SIL base plan revision 1.34. There are two tabs available to us. One is stages and tasks, and the other is checks. Okay, and we'll talk about checks in just a second. There is also this really handy guide over on the side. So again, don't forget that when you're not sure what to do, you can look at that guide and it's coded with numbers to allow you to do different things. So, you know, number two, add a stage. To add a stage, click add stage. So, right under the, st the stages task tab, you've got this add stage and add task. So, you could say, you know what, we've got a, before we do the drafting stage, we have another stage which is prepare the work site. And so prepare the work site says, first thing, build a translation house, build a runway, you know, I mean, whatever, whatever tasks need to be in there, you could put that, add that as a stage prior to drafting, for instance. You know. I'm going to suggest that in general terms, if you're looking at a base plan, you're probably not going to be adding stages. Okay? And and tasks, we're not going to add a lot of tasks at the moment. On the right hand side, we have a basic window. If you click on drafting, all you see is the basic window. Click on keyboarding the first draft, where you see the task keyboarding the first draft, click that. You'll notice that what happens on the right hand side changes. Now you have a basic window and an, a basic tab and an effort tab, and you also have a number of informational fields that are going to guide us through the process of how we actually uh, manipulate the plan. Did you click on the arrow? I clicked on the task. Task. I just clicked on keyboard. So yes, Mary's asking about these arrows. There's two arrows and there's an X. What would you think the X does? Deletes, Deletes, rid of it. Deletes that task. So if you want to get rid of that task, you would click the X. Don't click it. Okay. Well, you say I don't really want to keyboard the task. Let's just get rid of that. It's nothing goes over when I click on it. <coughs> I think it, it was just it was stuck on drafting somehow. You don't have the right click, Mary. Sorry. <laughs> when the technician comes and looks at it, it always works. That's that's there's a there's a a rule of of computer science or something there that that works that way. Um, okay, so so a number of things have shown up. There's the name. There's the description, and we just said a minute ago that you as setting up your, your plan, you could actually modify that. So if you looked at the description and said, you know what, my people aren't going to, my team's not going to understand what that means, so I'm going to change the description so that it's a little bit easier for my, my team to understand, you can change that description, okay, and write whatever you want to write there. Whatever In whatever language you want to write, okay. Because this plan now is the plan for your team. You've, you've taken a base plan and you've applied it, but now this plan is the plan for this project. So recognize that if you're going to share this plan with something else, then, then every team, every pro project that gets it is going to change it. So if you change the language too specifically so that it's not something that wider communication could understand, then it may not be as useful. And you don't want to change, you don't want to have to go through and change the description for every project. Okay. But you might want to say, okay, well, that, that description is not as clear as I'd like, so I'm going to change the description. Okay. Down below, the question is, mark a task as complete. So, yes, Mary? Um, every time you change a specific line, like keyboarding, okay, and mm -hmm. you made a change in it, and then you want to change something in drafting section headings, 
do you have to hit OK each time? No, if you hit OK, it'll actually close the window. Oh, okay. If you hit OK, it actually closes the so window. You can keep making Just make all your changes. Make all your changes. Before you click OK, you want to make all your changes because when you click OK at the bottom, it's actually going to close the window. Ann? So, so you said if we make changes under the task there, the description of the task, it goes, it goes into the whole, into the general. No, 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 no. Anything you do now on this plan is on this plan. You're not modifying. You're not modifying the plan, the general plan. You're not modifying the base plan. You're modifying it for this project. And only those who use this project or are shared with this project are shared with. Right. Right. But, but, when you're in manage plans, you will see every plan that you have modified. You will see that as a plan, and you could attach it to another project. So if I modify. So as a consultant, if I modify this plan so the way I want my teams to work, or the teams that I'm working with to work, I modify it, and then I say, okay, now let's use this plan for this other project, they're going to see all the same description changes, for instance, that I make. So if I write the description in Kachikel, and then I try to share it with the moms, that may be a problem. So I want to do it in Spanish so that it would be wider communication. But I'm thinking more like even in the English, if you said, okay, mother tongue speaker doesn't mean anything, you know, mother tongue speaker, the receptor language doesn't mean anything, you know, so I could take that out of this description, you know, and just say the translator makes the first draft of the translation, typing in the paratext, okay? So, but that only impacts this project. Right, right. Well, a translator, not, not, when we say translator, that doesn't mean the, the expat translator or something no, that's, you know, no. you know, but a translator is somebody's keyboarding it. Somebody's keyboarding it. What if you come up with certain things that you're finding over several projects are similar problems and, you know, you fixed it once and in this one you fixed it again, you fixed it again. Is there any way to save those things? Yeah, again, if, if you're, well, there's a couple ways to do it, but if you're, when you create a project, then when you go to the manage plans, you could choose this plan that you've already modified to be the base for the next one. Okay, so if you modify this plan, and so there's a general principle, which is modify at the highest level that you want things changed. So if, when, when I work on typesetting scripture, and I say, oh, this paragraph is indented too far, I don't go through that paragraph and move it over just a little bit. I go to the style that applies to every paragraph and change it, if I want every paragraph to change. If I don't want every paragraph to change, then I, you know, so it's how high up do you want? So if you, if you want to have a plan that you're going to apply to five different projects, then make your change to one plan and then use that plan for the other four projects. Okay? Rather than changing it here and then 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 realizing, oh, I made it wrong. I need to go back and change it here and change it here and change it here. You know, okay. Once you've, let me say this, once you've created the project, the plan for the project, then you have to work with that plan. Okay? But in terms of setting it up, set up the plan that you want to use and then apply that plan to your different projects. So we can modify that. Mark the task as complete. When you click that link, basically you have, you have three choices for when, a, when something's going to be done. Okay? It's either done by the chapter, by the book, or by the whole project. So some things, some tasks, like get, a, get the latest copy of the publication manual. Okay? That may be a task that you'd want to do. You'd want to tell the team, make sure you have the latest copy of the publication manual. Well, that's something you do once for the whole project. You don't, every, you don't, every time you get a new chapter, you don't get a publication manual. Okay? Whereas keyboarding is something that you might want to check off each chapter. 
Okay, as you complete a chapter, say, yes, I've done this. There are other tasks that you might say, well, when I finish this book, mark it as complete. So when can you mark this particular task as complete? And so you would choose that. So for keyboarding, right now, keyboarding is said once every chapter. That's when it's going to be. If, if you as a team said, you know what, we really don't need to mark each chapter. Let's just say you finish the whole book. That's when we'll say it's complete. You could do that. But uh, this is where you want to think carefully about what's done. And, and that's why the seed company and SIL and UBS have tried to put together their plans and tried to pick what they think is the most logical place to do this. Okay. When can a task start? Okay. When can a task start? There are, right at the moment, there are three choices. The number of choices depends on what stage you're in. So in stage one, you basically have three choices. You can either start it as soon as the work on the book starts. Okay. So when can you do exegesis? Well, exegesis you can do as soon as the book starts. Okay. But when can you keyboard the text? Well, you can't keyboard the text until you've done what preceded it, which was to draft it. Okay. So in this case, after previous task is complete for the chapter, or after the previous task is complete for the book. Okay? Some things, you wouldn't want people to start doing that until the whole book is done. Okay? When they finish the whole book, then they can start working on that. Other things, you say, okay, well, as soon as you finish writing out the draft for chapter one, then I can start keyboarding chapter one. When you finish chapter two, I can start keyboarding chapter two. So some things are going to be based on when you finish the chapter, some things are going to be based on when, it, on when you finish the book. And some things, I say, it doesn't matter. You can start this, you can start this immediately. Okay. Choosing illustrations. When should you start choosing illustrations? Well, in some ways it doesn't really matter. You could start looking at an illustration booklet right away and picking out illustrations if you had reason to do that. So it's not like choosing illustrations is necessarily dependent on having done something else. So some things are dependent, some things aren't. As a team, you're going to decide when this happens. So when can this task start after the previous chapter is complete? And then there's a question of does it require editing? So the task of keyboarding does keyboarding require you to actually edit the ta text? Yes. Does that require you to edit the text? This is important because it's going to deal with permissions. But, um, so as we look at this plan, if I, click on, if I click on complete translation brief, the translation brief and the description tells me what that is. It could be pre-drafting. You could create a pre-draft, but, but in this terms, there's no way to put a task in a pre-stage, so you'd have to create a stage that said pre-draft. Yeah. You could do something like that, but again, everyone's going to... You, could, you can create things as you feel the need, but I don't think the draft... I think the stages are going to be one, two, three. I don't think you can do a zero stage. Um, but in this case, it's once for the project. You do the, the brief once for the project. And when can it start? Well, since it's the first thing, it obviously is the first thing that starts. Yeah. Um, does it require editing? No. Okay, if I go down, if I go down to, to, to stage five, if I go down to stage five and I look at key term revision, for instance, if I look down at stage five, key term revision, it says re re revise the, er, do the revision once per chapter, and it's done after the previous task was completed. When I look at the, or I'm sorry, when I look at the list of when it can be done, you'll notice that the list of when it can be started is much bigger. Okay, because in theory, you could say revise your key terms 
You could revise your key terms as soon as you start working on the book. Probably not practical, but you could start at them. Or you could start it as soon as drafting is complete, or as soon as team checking is complete, or as soon as, you know, so you can choose to start something at any point. Okay, so, so what does that, what does that mean? What does that mean for this plan? Okay, when I look at a plan, when I'm looking at this overall plan, what this plan is telling me is when does this task need to be completed? So what this says is that key term revision needs to be completed in stage five. In order to say that we're done with stage five, we need to do key term revision. It doesn't tell me when I'm just looking at the left-hand side, it doesn't tell me when it starts. In the description portion over here on the right, it tells me when it starts. So in this case, this start task starts after the previous task is complete. And if I look at various tasks, I'll see that in most cases, they start after the previous task is complete. But if I jump up here to consultant check, consultant report distributed, you'll notice that what it says is it it's, can start after preparing for consultant check is completed. Well, preparing for consultant check is the previous stage. Stage is pretty big, so it's hard to get it all in here. Okay, so preparing for consultant check is the previous stage. So as soon as stage three is done, as soon as stage three is done, you could actually start working on the consultant report being distributed. As soon as you prepare, finish that other stage, you could start this. So it doesn't mean every task is not linearly dependent you can determine when a task starts. Okay? Where it is in the plan determines when it should be finished. Okay? Where it's in the plan determines where it should be finished. So if I come down all the way to the publication stage, the final stage, there is a check, for instance, called money final check. Okay. The fact that it's in this final stage means I have to do that check before I consider that I'm done with stage six. Right at the moment, it says that I do that check, I do that check after the previous check is complete for the book. But in theory, I could say I do that check after drafting is complete. So I could say that check could be done any time after drafting is finished. Once you finish drafting, you could do the money check. But it has to be completed, it has to be completed before I finish stage six. Do you catch the distinction? Yeah. The left. The left, whatever that side is, um, where it has the description and everything. The right. Is, um, is the beginning of the task, and the side on the left then is the task ends <coughs> by here. Right. So, so when it's I. It's not done by here, you're in trouble. Well, the, you, then, so I can't say that I finished stage three if I haven't finished the tasks in stage three. But I could have a, sta a task in stage four that I could actually start working on when I'm in stage two, for instance. Okay, yeah. so, it, so it, right, I mean, not all, not all, but, but so what we're saying is when, when do you have to finish the task? You have to finish this task in order to say you're done with that stage. In the descriptive part of it, there's a definition of when you start that task. Right, and, and it can be started earlier, so it, in, in essence, it's ongoing. 
ongoing. It could be ongoing. Now, we're, when we talk about, so, so what we're setting up in the plan, what we're setting up at the, in the plan is what are the things we're going to do, what are the things we, re, require, we want the team to do, and when do they have to finish it? Okay. So let's look at that for a second again. And I'm going to go back to this. I'm in stage six. And right now, it says that the money final check is done after the numbers final check. Well, again, just as a very trivial kind of thing, I might say, well, you know what? I really think the money should be done first. Money should be done before numbers. So I can click on the arrow here that's to the right of the entry, and it's going to warn me about modifying the plan. But I can move it up, and I can put money check before numbers check. And I can do that with any of the tasks. I can move that task and say, this task, you know what, this task really should be finished. This task should really be finished in stage five. So I could move that task up to a higher level. To move a task, you click the arrow, and then you have to move it again. Unfortunately, the, the, the pointer doesn't stay on the arrow to move it, but I can just keep moving that task up, even into the next stage. So I can take a task and move it to another stage. So, yes, you're going to get a notice. You're going to get a notice, a warning. The, the first time, you're going to get a warning that says, you're not supposed to do this. Make sure it's OK with your organization. Because the organization, assumingly, the organization has said, this is what this, is what this plan should be. But obviously, in a given team, you, you need to make the decisions, where do we want to finish this? Again, on this left-hand side, you're not saying, when am I starting it? You're saying, when do I have to finish this? So in this little, again, probably trivial, non-real example, I'm saying money. I want to make sure that the money has been checked before I finish stage five. So I've moved it up to stage five so that that's done before I get to the final check. Again, Ann's laughing, saying nobody would do that. What'd you No, this is this is the final this is the final check. This is the final check on on things like, you know, denarii and all that. That's an important and and maybe and 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 that may be a task. That might be a task that you might want to look at this. Is there a task in here that says make sure you're you're set for money? Take a look at it. Take a look take a look at the the the, the plan and see if it says anything about make sure you have funding. Yeah. It doesn't even say anything about printing, does it? Just send off to the printer. Send off to the printer, and, that, and then once it's there, then that's their job. But. Mm -hmm. Or dedication. Or yeah, right. So all of a sudden, if you start thinking about tasks, all of a sudden you could probably think of a lot of different things oh, yeah. I, but it's just, that, I, that that was where your mind was working. Context. That was where your mind was working. But so you might all of a sudden think, OK, well, maybe we should add a task here that says, make sure we've got funding for this. OK, should that be the very last thing that you do? <laughs> Probably not. Um, so maybe, but again, remember, it's the question of when does this have to be finished? And this might not be the task. Well, but this is, again, this is a project plan. So for the project plan, but yes, who, who makes those decisions? Who, so again, I'm not saying you need to put that into the plan, but I'm suggesting that as you think about what are the things that need to be done, you know, then you might want to think, OK, should we put this in the plan so that we are reminded, we are reminded that this task needs to be completed? You know? Because what this plan is going to do for us is it's going to remind us that these are the tasks that need to be done. So maybe at the end of stage four, 
or somewhere in stage four, maybe you would put a task that says, check with publication coordinator about funding. So that before you get all the way to the end, that task has been done. Okay. What's in the left-hand side, what's in the left-hand side defines when this task has to be completed by, I'm just going to put money back where it belongs so Anne is not confused anymore. After number, okay. So, so we, we want to do that. Right. This is the this is the frustration <coughs> with planning. The other thing I was thinking about <coughs> is that uh, <coughs> they have problems with uh, people conceptualizing this. Are we talking about a, a, a verse, a chapter, a book, or the whole New Testament or whole Old Testament? And when you talk about drafting, because uh, okay. So again, let me try to answer both those questions one more time. So, you're right. When we look at a when we look what's on the left-hand side, there's a very linear perspective. What you have to think about on this left-hand side, and I'm going to go back up to the top to drafting. On the left-hand side is that even though these things are listed linearly, many of them could be happening in parallel. Okay? What this is telling me is when this has to be finished. So, these tasks that are in stage one, in the drafting stage, have to be finished before I finish the drafting stage. Again, you might disagree and you might say, well, insert illustrations. We're not going to insert illustrations in the drafting stage. We're not going to do those until we get later. So you might want to move that down to a later stage. Okay? But, so some of these, but some of these tasks could be done at the same time. So one person might be drafting section heads and somebody else might be drafting footnotes, those could be done in parallel. Okay? What determines the lineali lineality, lineality? Okay. is not where it is over here on the left, necessarily, but the definition of when this can be started. Because if I look at drafting glossary entries, it says, as soon as work on this book starts. So it's not dependent on the fact that I've done anything else. Reading the draft aloud is obviously dependent on me keyboarding it. I can't, I can't read it until I've keyboarded it, okay? depending on how we're doing it. So, so certain tasks are linear and they're dependent on the previous task. Other tasks can run in parallel and are, are dependent maybe on the previous stage. You know, so it would say start this when the previous stage is done or, you know, at the, or when the book starts. The, how, do, how do we, when we're doing different books, and like, you know, we're going to do John all, all the way through. Right, right. How does that fit into something like this? Okay, well again, this is a plan, and one of the questions that Lewis asked was, how is it by project, by verse, by chapter, by book? Again, the task is marked complete, and here's the definition. Now, there's no place to mark it complete by verse. The, the verse level is not one of the places you would mark it complete. But you can either mark it complete by chapter, or you can mark it complete by book or by project. So if we're talking about what we're doing, everything that we do with the assignments is going to be typically by book. So you say, okay, I'm in John, and so I just go through John, and I just go through it and do it. Okay? We'll get in again to the assignments and progress page to view that more. But when we're looking at the plan, when we're looking at the plan, it's important to think through when does this task need to be completed? Because that's where it's going to go in the left-hand side. When does it have to be completed? So my personal opinion, when I look at 
drafting section heads and drafting footnotes and things. That, that's not something that I would typically, and I've heard teams doing in the first stage. You know, most teams do that at a much later life of the project. So that might need to be moved down to a later time in the project. But that would be something that you, you can do by simply clicking on it and using the down arrow to move it down into a later stage. What's on the left determines when it's finished. It's got to be finished by this point. What's on the right determines when you can start it. So again, as I look at insert illustrations, it's defined as as soon as work starts on the book. So I could start that any time. I don't have to wait until I've drafted it. I don't have to wait until I've done the footnotes. I don't have to wait until I've done all the things that preceded it. I can start that any time. Okay, so does that answer your question, Lewis? Okay, did I answer your question, Dean? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. David? seed company uh, I'm getting here so the microphone picks them up yeah in the seed company the the what's called the project uh, field coordinator sets up the the plan for the project and then with a lot of input from the consultants in that plan so that you want to have standardization yes okay. yeah okay. do you have a comment on that or uh, as a translation co coordinator you, you know what what's your initially I think we tailor some of these to each of our clusters and, and what actually happens there, but we're going to have to dialogue with our um, you know, C company field coordinator about what freedoms we'll have. Or, um, right. So this is one of the things that is going to involve a lot of, what's the word? Communication. Communication. <laughs> communication. It's going to involve a lot of communication. Okay. Obviously there's been a lot of work been done up to this point to get these base plans kind of in place, but as, as teams, you know, it, it, and, and as, again, it, it works up and, and, and works down because at the organizational level, these base, plans, these base plans were created by seed company, by the translation department. This SIL plan was created by the SIL translation department, you know. So at the high level, that was decided. I'm, you know, personally, I'm not sure if they understood all the lineality of things and, and how the, you know, how things should work. But so at that level, that's going to happen. Then, then there's another level down at the area where the area may say, okay, for us, we, we want to go this way. And then there's another the level down at regions, you know, where in this region, you may say, you know, we're here. And then you get down to clusters and say, okay, this cluster, it, it, you know, we work a different, you know, yes, that's the great plan, but we work a different way or we have a different set of needs. And then at the team level, you may say, okay, yes, that's true, but we don't have any illustrations. Okay. Well, if you don't have any illustrations, you can just take that task completely out. You know, you're not suggest illustrate whatever. I mean, you can. Yeah. So, so again, but each, but each, each situation it may require some level of modification. But again, ideally, we want to start at the high level and get the the plan. That's what we've got now. We've got three high level plans. So now. At the area and regional levels, and, and then with the you know, you need to take a look at that and say, okay, let's modify this for ourselves. This is where, quite honestly, it's difficult when it falls back down to the technician or the trainer to suggest this is how you should do this because it's not my role really to to suggest how a team should translate. This needs to come back up from a higher level of the coordinators, the things. My role would be to say, well, okay, I can help you how to, in, in the how to, do that modification if you're not sure. What I want you to capture, we're, we're almost at 10, what I really want you to capture here at, at this moment with this plan is, is that we can put a base plan in. We've done that. We've got a base plan here. This base plan can be modified, and we're going to modify it some after we break. This can be modified. 
what's on the left hand side tells you when these tasks need to be finished. That's what it's telling you. When this task needs to be finished. It needs to be finished by this point. On the right hand side you're going to define whether you're going to note that it's done by chapter or by book or if it's something that's just the whole project, yeah, this is done for the whole project. You're going to define when it can actually start. Okay, Can it start anytime or right after I finish the previous chapter? Or do I have to wait until I finish the whole book, the previous task for the whole book? When does it start? And then you're also going to decide, does it require me to edit the text? And editing the text is important because that interfaces with who gets permission to do it. If you say it requires editing, then it will give that permission to whoever you assign to it. Okay, so that's an important aspect. So we're going to talk about, we're going to modify this project plan some after we, we break. Can you just reiterate that last requires editing? I'm not sure I understand okay. what you're saying. So, so does, does doing exegesis, does doing exegesis require, well, that may be a bad example. Does complete translation brief, you know, a translation brief is just an explanation of what this project's going to be. Does that require you to edit this project? No. Doesn't. Edit the brief? No. The edit the project, the, the, the text, the text of the project. When you're in paratext, when you're in paratext and you're typing in the text, the vernacular, the vernacular text, that's editing the text. So when, there are certain tasks that actually require you to edit the text. You're going to go in and you're going to edit that thing. There are other tasks like, like doing a review with the village, doing a village review. You're, you're reading the text then, you're, you're reading it, but you're not editing, you're not typing in it. Now, putting in the corrections from the review, that's editing. Okay. So editing the text means you're actually editing the vernacular project. Yeah, we'll, and we're going to get into that, that assignments piece of it um, in just a second. So, let's take a break. We're going to turn off the, the live feed at this point, and we'll come back in 15 minutes.